Quantum computing will have numerous impacts on countless fields, but the largest and most immediate impact will be to our understanding of the material world, physics itself. We've been able to leverage our understanding of physics to achieve enormous heights and engineer incredible technology. We've had such success because we are able to distill physical laws to mathematical equations. Equations where we can plug in values and get valid answers with just a pen and paper. And with the onset of computers, running the numbers on potential creations got a whole lot easier. Engineers could now program physics equations into a computer and have it run complex simulations before ever touching a physical prototype. But not all physical laws are suitable for computer simulation. In the uncertain world of quantum mechanics, the multitudes of possibilities overwhelm even the most powerful computers. Richard Feynman, Nobel laureate and one of the most respected figures in physics, outlined the situation in 1981 with his seminal keynote, Simulating Physics with Computers. Classical computers, ones operating on ones and zeros, can at best only approximate quantum mechanical systems. Incredibly unlikely situations are treated as impossible situations and not considered. But more importantly, quantum systems are just more complex to simulate than classical systems. For each additional particle you want to add to your system, you need to literally double your computer power. Current supercomputers can at best keep track of the quantum states of 30 particles, and that's reaching the theoretical limit of what classic computers can hope to accomplish. But there is another way to run larger quantum simulations. In that 1981 talk, Feynman described a network of elementary particles, qubits, which you could measure and manipulate at the quantum level. Such a network could be set up to accurately produce the outcome of an arbitrary quantum mechanical system. Instead of computing the answer in the traditional sense, the system would literally imitate the system's quantum states. Simply set up the particles to be in a representative state of the system you're trying to study, and the universe itself will calculate the answer for you. There's no rounding, no exclusion of minute probabilities, and most importantly, adding another particle to the system does not require exponential resources. Just add another particle to the network. When Feynman gave his talk, such a quantum machine, a quantum computer, was little more than an interesting thought experiment. Now, it's a reality. In 2021, IBM announced the most advanced quantum computer yet, built on a 127 qubit network called Eagle. The technology is poised for exponential growth with a 433 qubit network planned for 2022 and a 1,121 qubit network in 2023. But there's still one major hurdle. These quantum computers are good at keeping their qubits isolated and stable, but they are not perfect. Sometimes noise gets in and changes a qubit's quantum state. These errors are even more bothersome than a traditional computer bug. You can't just double check that there are no errors and that everything is set up correctly because observing a quantum system takes it out of superposition, destroying the very setup you're trying to verify. It's as if you're setting up dominoes without any awareness of whether you've accidentally knocked down a section. And this is a big but workable problem for solving complex computations like breaking encryption. Methods of indirectly observing errors are being developed, and if you repeat the calculations over and over enough times, you should be able to tease out these errors. Still, it's a big challenge. A recent paper predicted it would take 20 million noisy qubits eight hours to break modern 2048 RSA encryption. And that might seem like an insurmountable task looking at the current 127 qubit state of the art, but if the history of the transistor and CPUs are any guide, we'll get to that point in a decade or two. But the real exciting applications of quantum computers is already here. Simulating quantum systems to further our understanding of materials and the physical world. Physicists have already begun to use quantum computers to probe theories of quantum gravity and magnetism. 
scientists have developed methods to use quantum computers to simulate realistic molecules and complex materials, whose description requires hundreds of atoms. We're quickly getting to the point where we don't need to create materials before knowing the exact nature of them. If it is possible to create materials with truly exotic properties, negative mass, anti-gravity, high temperature superconductivity, we should be able to confirm such materials are possible with quantum simulations, and then begin the process of engineering these materials. But don't just take my word for it. The Department of Energy agrees. A report from a 2017 DOE Basic Energy Science Roundtable on opportunities for computing in chemical and material sciences starts by stating, scientific problems in chemical and material sciences are uniquely suited to take advantage of quantum computing in the relatively near future. Indeed, quantum computing offers the best hope to solve many of the most important and difficult problems in this field. So quantum computers will help us develop new quantum materials. And for a hint at the impact these new materials might have, here's a snippet from a 2016 Department of Energy workshop on quantum materials for energy relevant technology. Before the advent of quantum mechanics, magnetic materials seemed so magical that Thales of Miletus in the 6th century BC ascribed a soul to lodestone because it causes movement to iron. In the ensuing millennia, inventive navigators took advantage of lodestone and compasses. Leaps in our understanding of quantum materials are now positioned to enable technologies as revolutionary as the compass was in its day. The language sounds like marketing hype, but the DOE has no product to sell. Instead, they are giving out money. Since just 2018, the DOE is on track to fund nearly a billion dollars of research across academic and business projects. It seems clear that these explosive DOE statements are the department's genuine expectations. They believe we are on the verge of society changing technological breakthroughs and want to help usher it in. At a surface level, this confidence is justified by the rate of quantum computing advances and the points laid out by Feynman in 1981. If there are untold technological capabilities hidden in quantum mechanics, we will soon find them. But as exciting as that is, the gravity of statements in the DOE's reports and their commitment to funding quantum computing research since 2018 makes you wonder if they know there is something to be found. A government program to build a secret quantum computer is not unheard of. In fact, we know through Edward Snowden's leaks in 2014 that the NSA was looking into doing just that back in 2012. The NSA aimed to break cryptography, a task not proven possible by quantum computers until Peter Shore devised a quantum algorithm to do so in 1994. The insight showing quantum computers' ability to transform material science was clear in 1981 after Feynman's keynote. The DOE would have had an interest in quantum computing over a decade before the NSA. And the DOE's interest? Creating materials that could revolutionize weaponry and sensors? Is of topmost priority to our government. There's reason to think the DOE could hide such a program as well. Brett Tingley at TheDrive.com recently wrote an eye-opening article contending that the U.S. government's darkest secrets are kept at the DOE. If the DOE has engineered quantum computers in secret and used them to develop materials with extraordinary properties, they likely would not encourage others to replicate the results unless they fully understood the advances. Engineering technology, not just exploiting the new materials, but defending against the technology as well. Perhaps they reached that point around late 2017, when they hosted the Quantum Computer Roundtable and then gave out close to a billion dollars in the next five years. Next comes the million dollar question. Could technologies stemming from quantum computer simulations be responsible for the sightings that launched the modern UFO disclosure craze in 2017? 
Is the Tic Tac a craft utilizing advanced material science breakthroughs from the DOE? Well, the Nimitz Tic Tac event happened in 2004. At that time, quantum computing was still in its infancy. But if the current state of quantum computers puts us at the precipice of revolutionary technology, and the DOE is indeed 20 years ahead of public technology as many would suggest, then it is plausible that the government crossed that precipice in secret 20 years ago. It's a bit less plausible that the DOE both identified such a material and was able to build it in 2004, but that possibility should be considered. And regardless of whether a few have seen past the precipice, we are all currently on it. What's beyond is hard to imagine. It's an exciting time to be alive. I'll keep my eyes towards the horizon. For more on this and other un- and underknown stories, be sure you're subscribed here at Rather Be Squidding. Thanks for watching.